Let's delve a little deeper into CSS selectors. Remember, the selector is the part of the CSS rule that allows you to target or pick the element or elements that you wish to style. Before moving on, make sure you watch this video, CSS Basics Selectors, and be able to answer the three guided questions. Remember, whenever you see a video like this, you need to return to the presentation, watch it, and make sure that you can answer the guided questions. I'm going to expose you to seven different types of selectors. I don't expect you to be able to memorize all of these. You will always have the ability as a developer, as a programmer, to refer to your documentation, the Mozilla Developer Network, this presentation, what have you. There are seven that I'm going to expose you to, universal, element type, ID, class, attribute, pseudo class, and pseudo element. Pseudo is sort of a fancy way of saying fake or faux. The universal selector is written using the asterisk. And as you can see here, there's one style rule I have written on the page. It seeks to color all text red. By using the universal selector, it matches all of the elements on the page. So in this case, you'll see that even though I have an H1 and a P, they both have their text colored red. And this is what the universal selector does. It matches the name of any element type. Element type selectors are the ones that you're most familiar with. So if you want to style all elements of a particular type the same way on a page, you use an element type selector. Here, I've created a style rule using an element type selector. I'm trying to select all the H1 elements on the page and coloring all their text red. Notice how in the example, only the H1 element has its text colored red. So if you want to style elements of the same type the same, you would use an element type selector. It will pick all the elements with that name and apply the style to them universally. Now we're getting into some of the more interesting and useful um, types of selectors, the ID selector. Think about the word ID. ID is like identifier. Most people have an identifier, whether it is a social security number, a student ID, or a name that makes them unique. Well, ID selectors are to be used for unique things. So if you have an individual unique item on the page that you want to style separately from that of other elements, you would use an ID selector. For example, here I have an H1 heading and it has an ID attribute, title. You will notice that I have written a style rule. Notice the hashtag or pound sign in front of title. What this does is it says find any element on the page whose ID is title and style it this way. So if you want to style an individual unique item, you will want to use an ID selector. To use an ID selector, you add an ID attribute to the element, to its opening tag, and then you style it by creating a CSS rule. That CSS rule should be prefixed with a pound sign and then the name of the ID. And that is how you can target individual things on the page for styling. What if I don't want to style something that's unique? What if I want to style a group of related things that all have something in common? I would have to use a class selector. So if I have many different elements on the page that have something in common that I want to style in a common way, I can give each one of those elements a class and then I could style that class. So for example, let's say there were certain things on the page that I wanted their text to be colored red. Well, then I could create a class called red and assign it to all of the HTML elements that I wanted to style their text red. So here's an example. If you have multiple elements that have something in common, you can group them using something called a class attribute. Notice how in the opening uh, tag of this H1, I have an attribute called class and I've given it the value red. Then I've written a style rule. Notice how the style rule is prefixed with a period. So it says dot red, and then I have my style um, declaration, color red. So in this way, you can classify elements together. All you have to do is give each element a class value and then create a CSS rule prefixed with a period that styles all of those common elements. So this is what a class selector does. Think about the word class. It's like classification or group. So if you want to style common things, you're likely going to want to use a class selector. If you want to use multiple class selectors, 
Let's say I want to have a style class named red and one named italic. And let's say I want to be able to apply these classes to different elements however I choose. By separating them with a space, you will be able to apply more than one class to an individual element. There are special types of uh, selectors called attribute selectors that allow you to target elements based upon the value of their attributes. For example, if I wanted to style hyperlinks that had a target equals blank setting, then I could use an attribute selector like this. It wouldn't style all hyperlinks. It would only style hyperlinks whose attribute target had the value of underscore blank. So this allows you to pick elements and then match their attribute values and only style them if certain values are there. So this allows you to really get granular with your style rules. Pseudo class selectors. Many elements that you put on a page have different states. For example, if you have a hyperlink, when someone hovers over it, that's considered to be a distinct state. And you can style something based upon that state. For example, if I wanna style hyperlinks when someone is hovering over the text, I could use a pseudo class selector like this. In this case, when someone highlights or hovers over the text for the hyperlink, it will change the text color to blue. So this is an example of a pseudo class selector. Last but not least, pseudo element selectors allow you to do special things like match just part of an element. In this particular case, I'm using the first letter pseudo element because I wanted to target just the S in Shakespeare. By using the first letter pseudo element, I was able to take the S, style it individually, coloring it red and making it really big. So this is just an example of a pseudo element selector. The selectors by themselves, the different types are very powerful, but what makes things really powerful is when you combine them. You can combine selectors in two specific ways. Number one, if you want to have the same um, style apply to more than one selector, you can comma delimit them. You can make a comma separated list of selectors and then have one CSS declaration block that will style them all the same. Or you can create new selectors by combining these different selector types using something called combinators. So if I wanted to create a CSS declaration block and I wanted those style um, settings to apply to more than one selector, all I have to do is separate my selectors with commas. In this particular case, I want to color text red and make font size 18 pixels. And I'm applying it to more than one selector. I'm applying it to all H1s on the page and all Ps on the page. So in this way, all I have to do is write one block and then I can apply it to many different um, sets of elements on the page. So you can specify multiple selectors by separating them with commas, as you see here. A slightly more advanced technique that I just want to expose you to, I don't expect you to memorize or know these things, is um, combinators. You can combine the different types of CSS selectors in creative ways to create very fine-grained, powerful, specific new style rules. There are four different types of combinators. There's descendant, child, adjacent sibling and general sibling. And each one has um, a, these symbols. Um, the descendant, for example, is a space, child is the greater than, adjacent is the plus, and general uh, sibling is the squiggle. And I'm not gonna go over all of these in detail, but I wanna show you an example. Um, one very popular combinator is the descendant um, combinator. What this allows you to do is allows you to target um, elements that are, let's say, beneath another element. So in this case, I want to target paragraphs, but I only want to target paragraphs if they belong or are inside of a div. So what I've done is I have div space p as my selector. This is what we call a descendant combinator. In this particular case, only paragraphs found beneath a div will be styled with the text color red and the font size 18 pixels. So what you will see in my example here, the only paragraph that gets colored red is the one that's underneath a div because this is what a descendant selector does. So this is just one example of a combinator. They can get very, very complex. This allows you to really target just the things that you want on the page.
Make sure you return to the presentation and visit the Mozilla Developer Network and read up on selectors. Pay close attention to the examples and then do the Thimble Mini Challenge. This one's called Selectors and it will get you hands-on experience with the types of CSS selectors we've talked about today. When it comes to the different types of selectors, I want you to really focus in on two of them, ID selectors and class selectors. I'm gonna demonstrate both for you here. I have a basic web page that has a heading, a couple paragraphs, and then I've got some subheadings, an image, subheading, and another image, okay? So I wanna demonstrate the difference between uh, styling something that is a unique item on a page and something that belongs to a group or has a, a common class or category. So images, for example, are something that you might want to style individually. So if you want to style something individually, um, target it in a very unique way, you need to give it an ID attribute and then give it a name. So for example, this image right here, I'm going to give the ID of DNA. And then what that means I can do is I can go to my style sheet and I can say, find an image that is named DNA and I want you to style it this way. So what I've done here is I have a CSS rule which targets all images, but then if I wanna target an image that has an ID of DNA, then I can use this pound symbol in order to create a very specific style rule that only targets this individual element. Notice how I've got an image down here, but it doesn't have a gray border, but the one with the ID DNA does. So this is what we call an ID selector because it's based upon the ID attribute that goes in the opening part of the tag. Now, what about class selectors? Let's say I wanted to create a style class. Remember, creating a style class, you prefix with a period. And let's say I want to create a class called highlight. My highlight class is going to have a background color, let's say of yellow, and let's say we want to bold text, font weight, bold. All right, so I have a style class I'm calling highlight. Let's say there's different um, runs of text on the page that I want to highlight. Well, then what I could do is I could come in here and I could, let's say, use a span, give that span a class of highlight, and then by wrapping the span tag, around individual elements, I can apply that style class. So let's, let's say there's another run of text. How about um, believe, let's do that, span. And then wrap a span tag around that. So this is an example of a style class. Notice how anything I wanted to style that way, I gave the class attribute with the value of highlight. If you go to our style sheet, dot highlight specifies the class style rule. So in this way, you can style things commonly using a style class rather than a specific unique ID.